Hello and welcome back to Divers Other Monks. Today I'm going to be reading one of my favourite medieval poems, How the Ploughman Learned His Pater Noster. It's a charming and funny story of a stubborn ploughman who's tricked by a wily priest into learning his Lord's Prayer. We all know someone like both of the main characters in this story. So without further ado, here beginneth a little jest as to how the ploughman learned his Pater Noster. Sometime in France dwelled a ploughman, which was mighty, bold, and strong. Good skill he could in husbandry, and gat his living full merrily. He could eke sow and hold a plough, both dyke and hedge and milk a cow, thresh and fan and gel the swine, in every season and in time. To mow and reap both grass and corn, a better labourer was never born. He could go to plough with ox and horse, with which it were he did no force, of sheep the wool off for to shear, his better was found nowhere. Strip hemp he could, to clout his shone, and set geese a brood in the season of the moon. Fell wood, and make it as it should be, of fruit he grafted many a tree. He could thatch a house and daub a wall, and all thing that the husband did fall. By these to riches he was bought, that gold or silver he lacked naught, his hall roof was full of bacon flitches. The chamber charged was with witches full of eggs, butter and cheese, men that were hungry for to ease. To make good ale, malt he had a plenty, and martelmas befell him was not dainty. Onions and garlic he had the no, and good cream and milk of the cow. Thus by his labour rich he was indeed. Now to the matter I will proceed. Great good he gat, and lived years forty. He could neither paternoster nor ave. In Lenten time the parson did him shrive. He said, Sir, canst thou thy believe? The ploughman said unto the priest, Sir, I believe in Jesus Christ, which suffered death and harrowed hell, as I have heard mine elders tell. The parson said, Man, let me hear thee say devoutly thy paternoster, that thou in it no word do lack. Then said the ploughman, What thing is that which ye desire to hear so sore? I never heard thereof before. The priest said, To learn it thou art bound, or else thou livest as a hound, without it, save it thou canst not be, nor never have sight of the deity, from church to be banished, ay, all they that cannot their paternoster say. Therefore I marvel right greatly that thy belief was never taught thee. I charge thee upon pain of deadly sin, learn it, heaven if thou wilt win. I would thresh, said the ploughman, ten year, rather than I would it learn. I pray thee, Sir Parson, my counsel keep. Ten withers I will I give thee of my best sheep, and thou shalt have the same stout forty shillings and groats round, so ye me show how I may heaven reach. Well, said the priest, I shall thee teach, if thou do by my counsel, to heaven thou shalt come right well. The husband said, If ye will so, whatever ye bid me, it shall be do. Well, said the parson, since thou hast grant truly to keep this covenant, to do as I shall warn thee shortly, mark well the words that I say to thee. Thou knowest that of corn there is great scarceness, whereby many hunger die, doubtless because they lack their daily bread. Hundreds this year I have seen dead, and thou hast great plenty of wheat, which men, for money, can not greet. And if thou wilt do after me, forty poor men I shall send thee, and to each of them give more or less, or they away from thee pass. I shall thee double for thy wheat pay, so thou bear truly their names away, and if thou show them all and some, Write in order as they do come, who is served first and who is last of all. In faith, said the ploughman, so I shall. Go when you will send them hither. Fain would I see that company together. The parson went to fetch the root, 
and gathered the poor people all about. To the ploughman's house forth he went. The husbandman was well content, because the parson was their surety. That made his heart much more merry. The priest said, See here, thy men each one, serve them lightly, that they were gone. The husbandman said to him again, The longer they tarry, the more's my pain. First went parter, feeble, lean and old, all his clothes from hunger had he sold. Two bushels of wheat gat he there, aneath for age might he it bear. Then came Noster, ragged in array, he had his back burden, and so went away. Two pecks were given to Quies and Chalice, no wonder if he halted, for kibbed were his heels. Then came Sanctificata, and Nomen Tuum, of wheat among them gat an whole ton, how much was therein I cannot say. They loaded two carts, and went their way. In order followed them other three, and Beniet Regnum Tuum, that was dead nigh, they thought to long that they abode, yet each of them had a horse's load. The ploughman cried, Sirs, come away. Then went Fiat Voluntus Tua, Sicut in Cello et in Terra, some bleary-eyed and some lame, with bottle and bag, to cover their asses they had not an whole rag, about ten bushels they had them among, and in the way homeward full merry song. Then came Panem Nostrum Cotidianum de Nobis Hodie. Among them five they had but one penny that was given them for God's sake. They said therewith that they would make merry. Each had two bushels of wheat. That was good. They sang going homeward a jest of Robin Hood. Et Dimitri Nobis Debita Nostra came then, the one sunburned, the other black as a pan. They pressed in the heap of corn to find. No wonder if they fell, for they were all blind. Each of them an whole quarter had, and straight to the alehouse they it led. Sicut et nos dimitimus debitoribus nostris came in anon and did not miss. They had ten bushels without and fail, and laid five to pledge for a kinderkin of ale. Then came etne nos and ducas and tentacionem. Among them all they had quarters ten. Their bread was bacon in and tankard, and the residue they played at hazard. By and by came said Libero nos amalo. He was so weary he might not go. Also came our men running in and on. He cried out, Speed me, that I were gone. He was patched, torn, and all to rent. He seemed by his language that he was born in Kent. The ploughman served them, each one, and was full glad when they were gone. But when he saw of corn he had no more, he wished them at the devil therefore. So long had he meat in his corn and wheat that all his body was in a sweat. Then unto his house he did go, his heart was full of pain and woe, to keep their names and show them right, that he rested but little that night. Ever he parted on their names fast, that he had them in order at the last. Then on the morrow he went to the parson and said, Sir, for the money I am come, my corn I delivered by counsel of thee. Remember thy promise, thou art their surety. The priest said, Their names thou me must show. The ploughman rehearsed them all in a row. How they were called he kept in mind. He said that our men came all behind. The parson said, Man, be glad this day. Thy paternoster thou canst say. The ploughman said, Give me my money. The priest said, I owe thee none to pay, though thou didst thy corn to the poor men give. Thou mayest me bless while thou dost live, for by these may ye pay Christ his rent, and serve the Lord omnipotent. Is this the answer, he said, that I shall have? I shall summon thee afore the official. So to court they went, both indeed, not best of all did the ploughman speed. Unto the official the parson told all, how it between them two did fall, and of this paternoster learning. Many to his words gave hearkening, they laughed and made sport anon. The ploughman for anger bended his brow and said, These poor men have all my corn, and for my labour the parson giveth me scorn. The official praised greatly the parson, and said right well that he had done. He said, Ploughman, 
It is a shame to thee to accurse this gentleman before me. He bade him go home, fool as he was, and ask God mercy for his trespass. The ploughman thought ever on his wheat, and said, Again, I shall never it get. Then he went to his wife and said, How that parson had him betrayed, and said, While I live, certain, priests shall I never trust again. Thus for his corn that he gave there, his part and oster did he learn, and after long lived he without a strife, until he went from this mortal life. The parson deceased after also, their souls, I trust, to heaven to go, and to the which he us bring, that in heaven reigneth eternal king. Thanks for watching. If you like what we're doing, or if you want to help support our mission, please don't forget to like and subscribe. I hope to see you again soon. Benedicat vos, omnipotens Deus, Pater et Filius et Spiritus Sanctus. Amen.